Threat actors have always evolved their tactics and techniques. Um, of course, it's, it's a constant evolution. Uh, that's why a security provider has to be agile enough to respond quickly to these changes. Um, a great example of that, uh, this year, 2018, we saw a huge shift from what had been a extremely uh, ransomware-centric 2017, uh, a shift away from that to the attackers uh, favoring the banking trojans and spyware type malware again. Um, they did con continue to use ransomware, uh, but we actually began to see that integrated into a later stage of the attack. So um, a malware infection uh, with spyware, for example, uh, the attacker would get into a network, uh, try to pivot, find their way around, um, infect other nodes inside the network, and then harvest as much personal uh, sensitive data uh, from those targets. And then as a final uh, measure, they would deploy the ransomware and demand a ransom for the locked files. Another trend that we've been tracking for uh, several years now uh, are the conversation hijacking attacks. Um, those are essentially when attackers have fished the credentials of someone's account, then they use those credentials to log in, and from that account, they re reply to ongoing conversations. Uh, in the replies, they attach uh, malware, uh, generally the Gozi banking trojan. Uh, so, as I said, we've been tracking that for quite some time, but we saw a huge spike uh, around September, October, November uh, of 18. Uh, Really, it was about a four or five fold increase over what we'd previously seen in the months leading up to that. Another attack trend we've seen on the rise in 2018 uh, were the BEC attacks, uh, which stands for Business Email Compromise. Uh, there are a lot of different variations of these attacks, uh, but a, a great example of it is the uh, sort of impersonation identity uh, spoofing that we see with these, where uh, an attacker simply goes on a site like LinkedIn uh, gathers the names of some high-ranking uh, executives uh, and then finds out the names of some individuals in the finance department and uh, then goes and crafts messages that would appear to be from those people uh, usually requesting wire transfers uh, of course they've also requested sensitive documents like W-2 information or even uh, we've seen some asking for gift cards um, so uh, spoofing that identity and then the you know the victim essentially not knowing that they're, n they're not conversing with that actual person uh, could in fact fall victim to those.